Hello, my name is Matt. Welcome to Unbearable 73. This video is a short video with some of the primary sources for Norse mythology, some channel recommendations, and a recommendation from a general book on the subject. Uh, notice there are a lot of people who have way better channels uh, about, about the in-depth on this subject than I do, than I ever planned to, but with the Northman being out, with all the interest in Gerald Tolkien's works, I thought I'd at least make a short video to give you the some of the primary source books that exist now and explain a little bit about the context that they exist in. So what we refer to as North mythology is surviving mythology of the Northern, tri uh, Northern Germanic tribes. For reference, uh, one of the reasons Tolkien was inspired to create the Legendarium was that he felt that the Germanic culture of the Anglo-Saxons was lost, so soon other mythologies. So the Germanic peoples were an oral culture, like many others, including the Celts and many world peoples. Most of their writing that we have comes off tombs, religious sites, and fragments of uh, wayposts and, and other things. The tribes who went north into what we call Scandinavia eventually were solidified what we call the Vikings. There's a map on the screen of the v Scandinavia during the Viking Age to show you where that those people wound up. They were the last surviving Germanic peoples in terms of the record that, were, that we recorded their culture of. Other Germanic people, obviously the people in Germany, of course, survived, but their culture became very Christianized and the original Germanic culture was lost. Uh. Uh, the Viking Age was from around mid-8th century to, uh, through early to mid-12th century. It was the Iron Age in, Iron Age in Scandinavia. The term Norse in the modern sense refers to the, to the old Norse-speaking inhabitants of Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, the Faroe Islands, and the, col the, the colonies that those people had established back then. Uh, the term Viking has two meanings. It can, mean, it can specifically refer to the sea raiders from... Scandinavia during the Viking Age. In historical terms, however, it refers to all the Norse population of during the Viking Age, not just the Sea Raiders. Due to the people of Scandinavia and the Viking Age having an oral culture that they didn't write much of anything down, we have two general sources that are the oldest uh, that go back to the Europe. We have literary sources and we have archaeo archaeological sources. This video is mostly talking about the literary sources as the archaeological sources will be in archaeological journals and, and such, at which you can peruse at your interest. The earliest or oldest surviving written items were skaldic poetry, which began in the ninth century and were passed on orally until eventually they were settled into larger prose or poetic works, uh, usually, but not always, in the, like the very late 11th century, the 12th, in the 12th century, and early 13th century ADs, uh, respectively. What we like to think of as the more detailed Norse myths are actually based on or assembled from the oldest skaldic poems during the very early Middle Ages. Some skaldic poetry survived on tombs, graves, and remnants of holy places or runic inscription. I'm embarrassed to say when I was a, when I had to move to this apartment that you see behind me uh, three years ago, I had a mass I had to massively downsize my library. I had like I don't know fifteen hundred books, maybe more, and um, and and I thought I would I thought I would wind up not having room for all my books, which I technically have would have had it uh but also i became thinking oh i could use old reference books and stuff on ebooks and you know i had this awesome 30 book six book set that my mom bought me when i was a kid they look like fake leather bound like um they looked leather bound but they were made of some sort of artificial material uh but very durable however but they look good and contain the all the ancient classics like aristotle's philosophy uh, other ancient books like Gilgamesh and Plato's Republic, the Iliad, the Odyssey, and, and so forth, and and all the, all the Norse mythology books that I'm going to mention here. Um, I've been convinced I could ebook everything, and now three years later, I hate e reading ebooks. I only want physical books, uh, so I bought some new copies of three of them, uh, two of them, and one was a copy of a few years ago when I wanted to reread it, reread part of it. Uh, the next two oldest surviving sources are literary sources, which were what I just kind of referred to. Uh, The Poetic Eda, which is what I'm holding in my hand, obviously, if you'll see, it's all poems. This Obviously, this, this edition will have um, the person who translated it, his thoughts on it, so to speak. But the Poetic Eda was written in the third, 13th century, early 13th century, late 12th, or, or was collected. Uh, it had no name originally and no known authors. It was just one of those documents that just sort of uh, coalesced at the time. Uh, based on a structure... Either early Christian or Christian influenced scholars wrote the poems down. No one even knows what the term Ida means. That's E D D A. Um, the age of the poems is still debated, meaning they know they came from the Viking Age, 
but no corresponding archaeological evidence has emerged to show exactly when each particular poem or po poetry fragment was written. The next oldest source, uh, written shortly there, uh, which dates from shortly after, is uh, the Prose Eda. Hmm. The the thing on the thing on the, the image on the cover is the original manuscript cover, so to speak, of the document from a long time ago. Uh, Snorri, it was written by Snorri Sturluson. Snorri was a Christian clergyman and politician who loved the old scholarly poetry. It also ha had no name originally, and like the Poetic Eda, was named centuries later. Uh, a lot of the poems in the Poetic Eda were included in the Prose Eda, but Snorri added text between the prose. Snorri also wrote his book as a primer to explain how to write scholarly poetry, because he loved it. You know. uh, there were several Danish chronicles in the early 12th century, which uh, two of them... Whose names are going to mangle uh, chron the, the Chronicon Lethorens, the chron Chronicon Roskildens. Uh, they were written by Christian scholars in like the 12th or, or somewhere in the 12th to late early 13th century. They We don't have the original documents in, in totality. I think there are fragments of them, but they survived as part of a longer manuscript that was so dates from like the 15th century or something like that. Uh, that one I kind of dimly remember from Jesuit high school in Latin class. We did a little bit of translation on a lot of these, uh, b all these Latin books like that. You know, um, so the and then the next source that came along with the Icelandic sagas. They were in start uh, from between the, the late 12th century and the mid 14th century. They were their collection of tales, so to speak. Uh, I don't have a, I don't have a copy of that anymore. Um, eventually, I'll have a new. I want when I want to reread, I'll buy a copy. I bought these. I've got these two new ones. Like I bought. This is what I wanted to reread a couple of years ago, so I bought it. Um, got this cheap, a hardcover, you know. And then I wanted to read the prose, Eda, and with the Northman coming out, I wanted to reread the other one. The next one I'm going to show you. So I bought them like a few weeks ago. Uh, the, the subject matter in the sagas tends to be older myths and legends from early in the Viking Age. The sagas are mostly anonymous, except for one that translates into the history of the kings of Norway. They're basically historical fiction. Uh, so the next oldest source is the one that the, that which relates to the North one. Uh, it was written in the late 13th century by Saxo Germanus. It was called in. Latin. It was written in Latin. It's, it's it, the Gesta Denorum, which translates as the history of the Danish people. Uh, this, yeah. and it's all text. No pro, no poems or poems, pro, pro, no poems or poetry fragments. Uh, Saxo was a clerical assistant to the Archbishop. It was originally written in Latin. Saxo attributed sources as Icelanders and uh, runic inscriptions, and this is important. His sourcing was uh, because his some versions of the, of the myths he records are different from what Snorri did, and so you can see that influence of one versus the other. That's what the, the historical analysis. Um, there were a couple of works by Snorri that survived as well. Uh, the History of the Archbishops of Hamburg, Bremen, by Adam of Bremen, was written in the early 10th century. Um, the Diocese of Hamburg, Bremen, is a Catholic diocese that had the authority over pagan Scandinavia. Uh, so basically... Adam and Bremen wrote down as he, they tried to uh, convert uh, the uh, pagans of Scandinavia and bring the world into the Catholic sphere, so to speak. Uh, not making any comments on the good or ill of that, obviously. Uh, but he, he documented all the journeys that uh, uh, were taken through the area and so forth. Yeah. And the last source I'm, I'm going to mention uh, has a, probably a longer... <laughs> longer story than the other one to tell you, but in 920 AD, the, in or around, I don't remember exactly, uh, the Caliph of Baghdad sent an ambassador and religious teacher named Ahmad ibn Fadlan to Bulgaria to explain Islamic law to the newly converted people of the area. Uh, his, he went with a large caravan of, people, uh, of other people from the, uh, the Caliph to, to travel, not just to that area, but to the places between that area. They traveled along established caravan routes to many places, the importance is that Ahmad ibn Falid wrote down the things he experienced as he traveled. In 1920, now, the original document, of course, like, like a lot of original documents, doesn't exist anymore. Uh, 
so that fragment of the century. But then in 1923, they found a version of a manuscript from that trip that had most that had recovered most, I think, or at least half of Fadlan's writing. Okay. So, so some of Fadlan's writing centered around the people he called the Rus, R U S. While it's not a hundred percent for us talking about the Vikings, his physical description referring to physically perfect specimens of people who were exceptionally tall and had blonde hair, but he had bad hygiene and vulgar sexual practices. And the time period he was writing from indicates talking about the Volga Vikings. The Romans called the people the Varangians, and in the Viking Age they ruled a medieval state called the Kivan Rus. That, that's the link there. Uh, and there's a lot more history to decompress in that area if, you, if you're interested about it. Uh, cool, cool sort of stuff. Fadlan records several parts of Viking culture, including the men being heavily tattooed, that they were all armed with an axe, a sword, and a long knife, he recorded a Viking chieftain's funeral that involved human sacrifice and a, and a ship burial, basically a burning of a ship, so to speak. Uh, and now, Fadlan's writing is notable because in 1970, Michael Carton published his book, Eaters of the Dead, that drew upon Fadlan's writing. And if you don't know, you should. Uh, this book was adapted into the movie The Thirteenth Warrior. There are other old, older sources. Uh, like I said, they mentioned the other sources, the archaeological sources. But archaeological sources only make sense of what they find by comparing to the literary sources, which is because of the uh, the lost information from there being no written records of, of Scandinavia or the other Germanic peoples. And here's some YouTube channels which will have uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, so the first couple I'm going to give are what we call the HEMA community. HEMA stands for Historical European Martial Arts. And obviously, they uh, they have a lot of these uh, writers will have or writers YouTubers will have videos with all sorts of stuff, not just from the Viking era, age weapons and, and all, but w w all sorts of interesting uh, weapons and armor and battle talk uh, discussion historical. Okay. Uh, Skol Gladiatoria uh, by Matt Easton. He's a historian and a uh, martial artist, both in, in the traditional you think like. Uh, you know, jujitsu in all sense, and as well as historical European martial artists. Uh, then you have Shadiversity, uh, Metatron, and Skullgrim. I have linked to all of them below. Uh, for some non-European human channels, there's a channel called European Lore. This guy is amazing. Uh, he centers most of his stuff about fantasy and the influence of, of European historical cultures on fantasy, but it's a great channel. And lastly, I'm going to recommend one more book. If you if you don't want to read all that, I mean, I'd recommend it because it's cool stuff. But uh, in 2016, uh, The Viking Spirit by Daniel McCoy. Uh -huh. uh, it was kind of like, it's kind of like a, a textbook for maybe a high-end high school class or an introductory college level class. And it's about Viking spirituality and, and Viking and mythology from the Viking Age, so to speak. I have links to all five books below and to The Thirteenth Warrior. I hope this video is informative. Uh, again, I'm not the found authority on this. I'm just pointing to you what the existing ones are that are cool, some cool stuff to read. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions for me about this video. Please share your thoughts. Share this video if you enjoyed it. Like if you like. Dislike if you dislike. Subscribe if you want to hear more from me. My name is Matt. This has been Number Apple 73. Have a nice day. I am out of here.